Hello everyone and welcome to the Spiritual Insight Show. I am Reverend Tiffany White, Sage Woman. Today is the first day of September, September 1st, 2015. Wow. It seems this year has been going by really quickly, I'm sure for a lot of us. <laughs> we'll be in agreement how fast um, the whole concept of time is going by. So welcome September. I hope you had a fantastic August. So let's give gratitude to August. Welcome September. And we will begin the show with numerology. I like to usually start the show off with that. So we're going to take the complete um, date. We use the whole complete date. So what I mean is the month, which is September now, 9. Uh, the date is the 1st and the year, of course, 2015. Those of you who have seen my show before or who know that 2015 <coughs> is a number 8 vibrational year. Highly spiritual, abundant. So now we're going to add... 9 plus 1 plus 8, which immediately, you know, you want to take that 1 plus 8, which is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18, 1 plus 8 is 9, because the goal with numerology is to take all uh, multiple digits down to the single digit between 1 and 9. So today is a number 9. Now, and also, the month, September is a number 9 month. So this really kicks off this month with what sets the rest of the month up, I think. The whole theme of a ninth month. And here is the energies for number nine, what we can expect this month. This is a day and pretty much a month when we can complete many things that we have had in the works for a long time. This is the time to wrap things up. And notice, too, in a cycle, every nine days, you know, that first day you, you feel like you want to start something. Where are you in day nine? Ah, so this is a number nine day. We want to wrap things up. And then tomorrow it's going to be a number one day, because remember, it goes from one to nine, repeats again. So tomorrow's a, a one day. It's a great day tomorrow to start something new. Today is wrapping things up. But here's the beauty in, in the nine inside of a nine, so to speak, is that even though tomorrow is a one, we can start something new, at the same time we can be wrapping something up with the starting of something new or just multitask. So it's very high energy. I feel every month of this year has been different types of high energy. All right, so we're going to have the urge to clean up your environment and relationships and get rid of the things that no longer have a purpose in your life. So this is interesting, clean up and purge. Number nine, fall, people think fall cleaning. We go through this in the spring too, right? But more like the fall, fall cleaning. It's time to purge the things, the situations, the people that no longer are abundant or serves, um, a positive and balanced purpose in our life. So, um, because some of those things can bring drama and too much off-balanced emotion. So by ending these things today and this month, it's going to be a so much easier time than ever before. It's also a great day and a great month for problem solving, for expressing gratitude, compassion, and, and understanding and empathy towards others. And number nine is associated with the element of fire. Fire is red. It's anything bright and shiny that gives out light. It's symbolized, of course, by summer as we're coming to the end of summer because we're not fall yet. All right. Um, because it is still very hot and warm <laughs> here, at least in Connecticut. It's, it's still very hot, warm, and muggy. Plenty of sunshine. So it's um, this beautiful fire energy to help cleanse and purge too. So you to think about what fire is a very powerful cleansing and purging element. Okay, it's a renewal type of uh, element. So, all right. 
<laughs> so the power of nine for today and this month, whole month. The topic for today's show is the collective consciousness. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to go a full hour. I'm just going to let, um, I'm just going to channel this information. Just let the guides come in. Angels, guides, those for our highest and greatest come in only and give messages on the collective consciousness. I really don't like a lot of words, a lot of lengthy explanations, and they know this. Uh, my guides do. I always ask for, for shortcuts. I always ask for simplicity. simplicity. Let's get to a simple explanation because as light beings, our true divine design, so to speak, as light beings, it is very simplistic. We have to make things harder than they need to be in these human bodies. As human beings, still being, it takes a little bit of work though, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So I ask always for simplicity, not a long, you know, drawn out a book or report, scientific report. No. You can Google that. If you want scientific expression of what the collective consciousness is or the psychology of it, just Google it and, and have fun with it. Uh, sometimes it's because your mind needs that information. And if you want to feed your mind, then that's great. Uh, I would rather, rather just, let's get to it. Can we explain it in a sentence or two? So when I asked, the guides replied, the collective consciousness serves as a matrix or a grid or a veil, so to speak, which attempts to, to mask the infinite field of potential. Through awareness, you can rise above this and elevate it. So a lot of us, you are in agreement that we come in blind. We don't have retain all the information of our past lives, of our, our, um, past lives here on earth, our past lives elsewhere. We just don't seem to have that information. We can all tap into it and the collective consciousness. And I recently had found that I had channeled a meditation and went online, um, just my normal social networking, reading emails. And there was a newsletter where some woman channeled, um, a message and it was very right on track with the meditation that I channeled uh, messages you're gonna find that messages kind of repeat itself we call that synchronicity don't we we call that validation especially if we ask a question and we hear something repeated so I thought it's beautiful I always when that happens that happens a lot is we're right on track we're all in the same thought process are we all in the same collective consciousness? Now, I have heard some people talk ill about the collective consciousness, that it's just everything is collected here. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. So be careful what you're tapping into because it could be lies, it could be fear, false, whatever. Everything has many different levels to it. We want to refer to it as like an onion or just many different levels, a spiral. Uh, there's just not a flat landing surface to land on. Everything has is multidimensional. All right. So in the collective consciousness, we do have a first platform in this quantum field that when we start developing, we usually land on and we can channel all sorts of information and and here a bunch of information uh, there has been evidence and proof of this for those that do like that scientific type of validation hopefully you'll get to a point to where that doesn't even matter the only validation needs to scan it through the Sacred Heart Center how does your body feel your body pay attention to your body when you hear the truth Pay attention to how your body feels when, you, when you're being lied to. The people that know they're being lied to, do you know how they know this? 
It's because they're paying attention to how their body feels. They just know it. Whether it's they feel it in their gut that something is wrong and not right. Whether you can just, what, however you get it. Because it's different for people. You know, it could be very similar. It could be different. Uh, but it's, it's um, pay attention to your own body. To how your body reacts. To how your body responds to things. So, we should always strive to go much higher. I apologize about that. <laughs> Forgot to mute the phone. <laughs> anyway, we should always strive to go higher in, the, in this collective consciousness. Again, remember, it's multidimensional. So, we want to go higher and higher and higher, not just the first level, second, third. Um, and believe it or not, the collective consciousness is pretty low where it starts. And so this is why we can get where it's everything. Uh, but you want to get to that collective consciousness level where it's all just complete balanced and smooth and one. And we recognize that oneness and we, we get it. We understand. We, at this point, what you want to strive for is we stop separating um, and separating, overanalyzing, labeling, it's, you've got to see everything, right? There's good in the bad, there's bad in the good, and instead of constantly going from one extreme to the next, it's, let's find that balance. We've got to find that middle ground. Get back to center. Balance. It's all about balance. Anyway, so the collective consciousness, um, because I was starting to say, sorry, that science proves, has proved this, that there has been scientists in the past, and I'm trying to remember which two scientists it was, who put in for a patent for the same invention, are very similar, I should say, and they were on different parts, they were in different parts of the world, and they had these, they put in for these inventions, and the patent office, you know, was like very similar but it was for the same purpose. And this has happened more than once. So that's a way, because it has to go through like documentation, how the patent office kind of catches this as far as, wow, um, that's pretty cool. Um, so those that claim that, oh, you steal this, you steal that, I don't put my name behind anything that's channeled. And even if I'm having a conversation with a guide and I know their name, I'm not going to, there's no need. They're, they're not like that. A lot of times we're all tapping into the collective consciousness, which means it's the information that's available to everyone. All right. The universe didn't sit there and copyright and patent and trademark all of this stuff and say, you can't use it. For a fee, you can. It's ridiculous, isn't it? No. It's all there for us to be able to tap into and access. All right, so we can go um, and tap into these higher vibrations. Absolutely. Always, always ask when you are conversing with spirit, with your guides, with angels. I just when I say guides, I really mean everything. Um, God, angel guides and guides in all sorts. And this can be animal guides. It can be all types of beings of guides. Okay? Um, but always make sure it's for your highest and greatest. And for, if you're asking for someone else, make sure it's for their highest and greatest. Because a lot of times your highest and greatest and someone else's highest and greatest is not on the same dimension. And that's okay. Doesn't mean one's better than the other. It's just mean you're in different places, and that's all right. Okay, so um, just just keep that in mind with the collective consciousness. Is it a dangerous place? So it's, no, it's not. But don't be so quick to think that somebody steals something from you when there's five people can go. You can give them a topic or a question. And they go into meditation, and it's all going to be very similar when they come back out. And another thing, too, is especially if they're in the same room, because they're tapping into each other's energy, so to speak, and they take the journey together and find the answer together. 
Isn't that beautiful? And that happens even if you're not in the same room, like in the, these inventions. So they're focused on the same thing. They're focused, their intention is on a particular question or a topic, situation, and they come back out with very similar, if not totally perfect alike, like a twin, you know, like a, a copy, so to speak, uh, results. It does happen, and it's wonderful. Just to, And it shows you to me that that's the proof that we are energetic beings. And all this information, and it is stored in levels. And as we get to each level, like security clearance. <laughs> you know, we get up above these, you know, these, these certain levels and this clearance level. And now we get to a little bit more. And the higher we go, there's more information that we tap into. And because it takes trust. And so it is layered like that. And it's absolutely beautiful. So don't stop meditating. Don't stop trying to reach the higher levels of collective consciousness, so to speak, or just in the upper vibrations. And that's what that is. Okay. So it's um, when I ask for messages and things like that, I don't... Where does, where does that come from? I know a lot of people, we like to be respectful to those that give quotes. And I understand that before when we were more of an intellectual only society, we're a very spiritual society now. We really have become more aware and more awakened. So do we really need to sit there and I'll tell you, I channeled this or, you know, I went to the collective conscious information just came for me, um, just came in. So then scan if you don't have a person if someone's not giving you the name or a presence or you're feeling that it is for your highest and greatest, I put it through again. Going, okay, who is this from and is this for the highest and greatest? Just as a check. Yes. Okay, that's great. Sometimes you get names, sometimes you... I usually do not get names, but I know their energy. I can tell the energy difference between an angel between a spirit guide, your power animals, they all feel different, okay? And so that's how it feels for me might be different for you. So that's why I'm not going to great detail over that, okay? So just, just know that, work on that. Many of you developing are going to land on that first level of collective consciousness. And just like I said, always strive to go higher. And that's what we're here to do, to strive to go to the higher realms of vibration, the multi-dimensions that we are, and to bring the world back to, ba to peace, back to a balanced state of being. And I shouldn't say the world because the earth knows how to balance herself just fine. I'm talking humanity. Humanity needs to find balance again. We go from one extreme to the next. That's not a way to live. All right. The oneness that everyone's talking about. The oneness that you hear about. What does that mean? The oneness means no separation. All right? So, I hope I've answered that for you about the collective consciousness. Woo! I know, I know. You're going to hear me say, stay hydrated, everyone. <laughs> Very important to stay hydrated. And notice certain times when you drink a little bit more water. We had a full moon this past Saturday. And so I find that near the full moon, I'm, I'm consuming more water than usual. And it's fine. Just go with it. <laughs> but definitely stay hydrated. Our bodies need that. Because we keep our bodies healthy and it does help us. Mind, body, and soul needs to be in alignment. For us to complete this mission of returning back to our light being status. Does that mean we lose our human bodies? Well, we know the human bodies are temporary anyway. Don't they? Don't we? Well, if we're so busy worried about material possessions here on earth, we're so worried about any and everything else other than taking care of ourselves. How are we preparing for our transition? 
How are we preparing for our light body? We're not. You haven't given any attention to your light body. These are the people that have the hardest time crossing over at death, at the transition. Because everything that they have lived for is to establish some title, to establish who they think they are, to establish something that was achieved through doing. A lot of doing. Um, and collecting of material things that really, uh, people, oh, you know, the more that you have, it, it's your worth, really, a physical worth, material possessions, we have been misguided and misled, that is not true, what we need to be doing is we need to be building and working on our spiritual body, they will call it the Ka body, the body, our light body that's in the quantum field that we are still connected to. We need to be strengthening that. We need to be going into that collective consciousness and communicating not only with our Ka bodies or our rainbow bodies or whatever you would like to call them and also with each other as well. We do that in the collective consciousness. Like I said, we're all communicating in one way, shape, or form. So a lot of things are happening, and that's the, the kind of beings that we are. It's not one thing at a time. We really are taking on uh, many tasks, many situations on a conscious, a subconscious level, and we're, we're getting a lot done. Is it spiritually productive, or is it physically and lower vibrational type of production. Because right. we should always strive for perfection. And don't be intimidated by perfection. Absolutely. When we were in our light bodies, our divine design, um, our light being, bot, light beings, body, so to speak, or kind of form or shape, whatever, uh, we didn't, we were perfect. We really were. And then we, to live and survive on this earth, we made these earth bodies and everything was fine. But we started to separate. The separation started. We separated from our light bodies. We separated from understanding, knowing, and believing that we are in the upper vibrations. That we are the same level as creator. God, Creator, whatever you want to call, whatever name you have, okay? And even if you don't believe, that's okay. It's still a belief, I can tell you. <laughs> whatever choice you make is still a belief. <laughs> it's all right, okay? We are the fallen angels. I know I've said this before, but we are the ones that are the fallen angels in every culture that is depicted, any type of, of fallen angels. It's a representation that we were up in the higher vibrations and that we fell. We separated. All right. So, collective consciousness. Just understand that that is where a lot of us who are developing, um, you'll land right there on that first level. Keep, like, like I said, just keep going through. Once you're done there, you go to the next level, up, 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 up. And uh, visualization is fun, so that's why I, I throw these things out, like, oh, security clearance, or you know, imagine yourself up in, a, in an elevator going up and up and up. If you ever feel like you're going down, it's okay, because you can only go so far up before you're going to go back down and then back up again. So there's going to be a lots of times during this process of our whole awakening process where you feel like you're going up, up, up a spiral, then you're going to feel like you're coming down, 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 and that's okay. I want you to think about our DNA structure. So when you feel this process, imagine a golden staircase. You're going up this golden spiral staircase, coming down the golden spiral staircase. Coming down is not bad. All right, ascending, descending, balance. All right, you're bringing balance. I congratulate everyone who are taking the necessary strides in the awakening process because someone who is not 
he doesn't care about that, he wouldn't be watching this video. So thank you for taking the time out and for uh, for caring about you and humanity. Because as you take care of yourself, you're helping everyone else. Now here's something else too. They say a lot of uh, dreams we access through dreams. We, we access the collective consciousness. Uh, people, they say, oh, is this the place where we we need to have a conversation with someone? It's a, it's can be described as collective consciousness. Would you say that collective consciousness is on the astral plane? It's but there's many again different areas, right? So it's if, you know you could have someone come up to you and say I had a dream about you. I think people come and tell me that I gave them, I came to them and gave them a healing during their sleep and they knew it was me. I might not recall and recollect that when I wake up in the morning. But we all do work even in our sleep. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, we're always working, striving for our perfection. For those that they, if that's in their mission. It's all about a choice too. We have a choice in how we want to pursue things. Those that there's some that are very comfortable with separation. They're very comfortable with the negativity because the life they have made for them is one of greed and false power. Okay, the power we have also been uh, misguided as to what power really is. Like again, anything lower vibrations, anything physical, anything material that's not true power our true power is stepping back into the stepping back into that wisdom and knowing that we are divine light beings there's more to us than these human bodies so step back into that and know that whatever happens here on this earth plane is temporary it is all part of our mission. What are we here for? Are we here to help bring balance? Or to help the world spin out of balance? To spiral out of balance? But it's... I am finding that the lower vibrational energies are imploding on themselves. It can seem like it gets worse before it gets better. But know that... Um, all... Everything's going to work out really well. And all this information, again, collective consciousness. is the Akashic Records in the collective consciousness to some degree. Okay, so I'm using all the different terms that are used to describe, all right? And really collective consciousness is what Carl Jung came up with. So we, here we have some people say the Akashic Records, which is in this hall of records. It's still a multidimensional place in space, and so is the collective consciousness right there in the quantum fields. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And this this show, uh, this the topic, the collective consciousness, was emailed to me by a viewer. So thank you. Please keep the suggestions coming. And I will talk more about the next for next week. I'm still working on this because I find it's been get, becoming more evolved. And as I am preparing for for next week's show is astral travel, astral projection. That was also another viewer request. So I'm working on this because it's, um, some of my shows I like to, okay, most of my shows, I want to give you a very simplistic explanation. But for those who still are working on um, har a harmonious relationship with their mind and their sacred heart center, I'm giving your mind something to stay busy. And um, our mind should be in observation mode only, though. And we should continue to feel. How do you feel? Very important. Ask yourself that every morning. How do you feel? Because to get into this collective consciousness, to get into the multidimensional um, levels, vibrations, dimensions, it's all feeling. That's our power. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a beautiful week. Uh, tonight, actually, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 
I have started back up a radio show, a Spiritual Insight Radio Show. It's a one-hour show, and it's now with my new production company, Goldilocks Productions. So if you go into Blog Talk Radio, find Goldilocks Productions, and my show is Tuesday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. If you also would like to shortcut, shortcut, you can go to my website, whitesagewoman.com. Click on Goldilocks Productions, and you will scroll down. You'll find the link to take you right into um, my show, The Spiritual Insight. So it takes you to the Goldilocks Productions, and you can click on the upcoming shows and archive shows. And also, I will have them on my website as well. On my website, the TV and radio page is dedicated to True Psychics Network, to TPN TV, where this video will be posted as well as um, my personal YouTube channel, uh, TPN's True Seconds Network's YouTube channel. And I do believe all the True Seconds Network TV shows are still being streamed through Roku, through the Be The Light Metaphysical Chapel. So I do believe we still have that channel as well. And that information is on TrueSecondsNetwork.com, TPN TV page. So thank you everyone for tuning in and sitting in circle with each other and many blessings to each and every one of you.